Welcome to another tech video from From Your Computing. So today we're going to be looking at upgrading um, a Draytech Vigor AP912C. So these can be used for um, as an access point, uh, network or Wi-Fi repeater or um, mesh Wi-Fi. Uh, we're going to be using it as a standalone access point. So we're going to be using it cable to a switch. Um, which then goes off to the router. So what we've got here, we'll just go, run through the setup. We've got a PoE switch, which is powering the access point directly. And then this port here is going off to our um, router so that it can gain internet access um, and so we can access it. So what we're gonna do is, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get logged on to this device. Um, we're gonna show you where you can download the firmware from, making sure you've got the correct firmware. Um, and then how to upgrade the firmware on the device. And then we'll be, just be running through some brief configuration and setup instructions on how to get it up and visible on your network. So without further ado, let's crack into that. Okay, so the first thing, once we've got the device up and running on the network is we want to find the IP address so that we can connect to it remotely. So we're going to use this device called, or this application called Angry IP Scanner. This will do a sweep of your network. And you just input the IP range that you want to scan, click on start, and it will go off and find everything. So you just got to wait for that to complete. Okay, so it's just a matter of finding something that you don't recognize. Let's see if this is it, which it is. Okay, so what we've done, we've searched through, we've rec we recognize that most of the devices on our network, and there was one here that didn't have a host name associated with it. So we've attempted to connect to that IP address using the web browser and it's pulled up the correct um, details. So we log on with admin admin to start with. <clears throat> okay, so these are the configuration steps. So uh, you can see the firmware here is 132. That may, may well be the, um, uh, the latest, but we can check that in a minute. Um, we're going to select our access point mode. Uh, you can either do a mesh route, which is your um, mesh router basically, uh, and then you can add additional nodes to it, or you can add it as a range extender. But we're going to access it, use it as a access point. Um, we are just going to have the one Wi-Fi enabled, but if you wanted to have a guest Wi-Fi, for instance, you could set that up on the second one. Um, and we're just going to run through the defaults we're going to change our password. And then we're going to select finish. So that does the basics in terms of the configuration. Next thing we want to do is we want to get the firmware. So we're going to go to the Draytech website. And we're going to go to support, and downloads and resources. And we are going to look for the um, Vigor AP910912. C. Okay, and as you can see that the latest version is 140. So we're going to download that. And then we're going to open the file and that's our configuration and we're going to extract that somewhere meaningful I'm going to close that down now we're going to go back to our uh, client device here and we're going to find we're going to find where we can do the configuration OK, 
Okay, so let's come out of there and we'll do it in Chrome. That's better. System maintenance, we want to come down to firmware upgrade and then you can refresh the firmware list here if you want to. So this will go off and check on the internet. Okay, so you want to find the firmware version and we're going to select our firmware AP912C version 1.4. We're going to say upgrade. So you can obviously do this from your um, management console or from a Draytech router, um, supported Draytech router. Um, you can access your devices directly from that, or you can log on remotely if it's a standalone device like this is. Okay, your configuration will be changed. Um, in fact, so the firmware is a, what's called the .all file, so it will remember all of your configuration that you've input previously. So don't worry about losing your settings, you won't lose your settings, um, but it will uh, upgrade the firmware, but you will keep all of your settings. Okay, so the next thing that we, we're going to do is we're going to go in and have a look at the band steering. We want to make sure that enable band steering is on. So what this does, this will try and push all the clients onto the 5 gigahertz network um, based on um, how busy the channels are. Um, but we want to we want to do that because obviously 2.4 gigahertz is a lot slower and although it's got further reach, um, if we can connect the clients, um, if they're within range of the 5 gigahertz um, band, then we want to do that to make sure that they get the best connection possible. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to check the security because we want to make sure that it's AES, which it is, and WPA2 uh, personal is the option. Let's see what else we got. So we want WPA3 and WPA2 personal with AES. And the reason for that obviously is um, iOS devices will want you to, or the latest devices will try and put you onto WPA3. So we want to make sure that our clients have that as an option. And then 5 gigahertz under security, we want to make that the same. And we're going to OK that. We don't want to select TKIP because um, all Apple devices will report it as an insecure network. So you must make sure that you select AES here. That is it in terms of the configuration. There are a whole load of other stuff, um, but we're not going to go into that today. The main point here was just to upgrade the security on our wireless um, networks and also upgrade the firmware on the device. Okay, so before you deploy your standalone access point into the network, there's a couple of other settings that you want to go through and make sure are functioning correctly. So the first one is your LAN settings. If you go under the general setup, as you can see here, we've got ours enabled for DHCP, so it will pick up an IP address from your router. Um, but obviously, if you want to specify a fixed IP address, then you would untick the DHCP client option, input your IP address, subnet mask, and your default gateway and DNS servers if you require them in this area here. We leave ours set to DHCP. Um, also, you can set your um, wireless access point to be a DHCP server if you're not running one on the network. 
Um, so, or you can also set it as a, a relay a agent. So in other words, you would specify your router um, that your DHCP relay is your wireless access point. But um, we leave ours to disable server so that all of our clients pick up the IP address from the router and therefore the router knows about everything. The next thing that you want to check before you go live in your network is under the uh, system maintenance you want to set your date and time make sure that it's picking up the right date and time um, and you can do that by clicking on enquire time here but you want to make sure that you have your ntp client enabled because you need to have the correct time set certainly for logging is very important um, but also for certificates um, under your management, so um, what we've done is we've gone in, so the default management is using TLS um, 1.0, so we've changed ours to manage the TLS EN13, which is the highest one available. So select that. Also, if you want to um, set some access lists on the device itself, you can do that here. And the only other thing that we would do potentially if, if it's in public site, then we would disable the LED so it's not flashing and blinking in front of everyone's faces. Um, so um, because ours is going to be in a drop down ceiling, then we will leave that enabled. And then the other item here is we can give it a host name if you want to, um, or you can also, you should disable the Telnet server on there as well. So we're actually going to give this um, a name. So I'm going to call it P01. So disable Telnet server, um, enable TLS 1.3, and um, we're not going to be using the access lists. And then the other one useful one is an interference monitor. So you can check the um, interference on all of your channels by, uh, by running this utility. You want to do that so to make sure that you pick the correct channels. So that's it. Uh, if you found that video useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.